Greetings, Desperados. Your time is valuable, so let's jump right in. In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the unique artifacts of Chapter 3, as well as showing you where to find them. Unfortunately, the Barren Lands is a huge open space, so to save some time, our start point will be changing several times. But I will alert you each time where our journey starts from. Please remember that some of the artifacts will be in alternate spots, but in roughly the same areas. And do remember that the paths I take in this video are pre-cleared to help speed things along. Here's a rough map and timestamps in case you lose your way. With that being said, let's get started. The Way of the Spirit Bell can be found inside the catacombs of Diggersville. You'll need to find this item to progress the story, so this is more of a mention than anything else. But you will also need this item to find unique artifacts and weapons. Go check out my weapon guide next if you're interested. You will have a waypoint to this artifact and you should grab it before continuing into this guide. Now, starting off for real, we're headed to the Ace of Diamonds first. Heading down from the Undead's camp, round the carriage camp, and head into town. Head towards the saloon, and then head upstairs once inside. One of the upstairs rooms will have this card. The Ace of Diamonds grants you an increase in headshot damage by 20%, and if you have another Ace equipped, it further increases that to 30%. Now, following the railroad tracks out of Diggersville, you will eventually come across a red train car, abandoned. Head inside, and on one of the benches, you will find the Chaos Die. This die is the key to finding Chapter 3's Easter Egg, and if you want to learn more about that, be sure to check out this guide next. But there is much to cover, and we need to keep moving. The Chaos Die is RNG's Revenge Personified. Roll a 1 to instantly heal to full health. A 2 leaves you with 5 HP. Rolling a 3 grants you a $10 deal with the Devil. If you get hit, you lose 10 bucks, but if you land hits, you gain 10 bucks. Rolling a 4 removes all soul flaws and curses. Rolling a 5 grants a small treasure which spawns nearby. And rolling a 6 teleports you to an unknown location. In order to remove this artifact, you must die or drink a purple revive. Next up is the Devil's Eye, an easy artifact to miss. So from that red train car, head to the right or south and hug the mountainside till you reach the second large pool of blood. On an island in the middle, you will find this ring. The Devil's Eye grants an extra 2% HP up to a maximum of 30 HP for every enemy killed, and headshots restore 10 HP while wearing it. Be warned that once you die, this artifact returns to its base values. Next, we're going for the Reaper card. From that same red train car, head right or south into the carnival grounds. Inside one of the carriages, you will have a chance to find this card. It spawns in a different spot every time. The Reaper card grants a 30% chance to instantly kill a target if it was a surprise attack. This does stack with the Needle of Fate's insta-kill chance as well. Moving right along, we have the Necklace of Alvaro next. Before you head to this one, be sure to have the Painter's Cutthroat Knife, on which you will find in the Undead Start Camp. Heading over to the Sawmill's Tunnel Entrance, and to the left of the tunnel you will see a carriage parked alongside the mountain wall. Head inside, and use the knife on the painting on the right wall. The necklace can be found on the desk inside this room. The Necklace of Alvaro blocks an enemy's successful attack every 30 seconds or every 10 seconds if you have Alvaro's rib equipped as well. You cannot, however, unequip the necklace while its cooldown is in effect. Returning to our roots here, we're going for the Shadow Heart next. From the Hunting Tower Rest Camp, head north and up into the mountains, following the winding path until you reach the tribal camp at the top. You will need to have the Spirit Bell equipped, but at the back of the village a mountain passage will open. Once inside, Head to the right and into this chamber. On one of the burial altars, you will find the Shadow Heart. Shadow Heart is what every Vendigo Heart wishes it could be. It regenerates 1 HP every 2 seconds for you, increases your max HP by 25%, and makes sneaking 20% more efficient. Shifting locations once again, we're going after the Hairy Horror next. From the Ritual Site, head north and follow the mountainside into the Hunter's Village. Pass through the gate area and head to the right. The Horror has a chance to spawn in the stables on the right or in the Hunting Lodge located in the same area. The Hairy Horror grants a 20% increase in sneaking, increases your surprise attack damage by 30%, but makes Boo Hags deal 20% more damage to you. To remove it, you must die or drink a Purple Revive. We've got two up next, starting with the Pawn. From the Doctor's Rest Camp, head to the left and into the Sawmill area through the tunnel. Once through the tunnel, you'll see a small red shack building on your right. Head up the slope to it, and awaiting you inside on a shelf is the Pawn. The Pawn reduces your max HP by 30%, but every enemy killed increases your damage by 1% up to a max of 30. Dying restores its base values. From this spot, follow the mountain wall all the way to the south till you reach a corpse being guarded by a broken scream. On his bones, you'll find the Monocle, 
The monocle grants you the ability to see enemies through walls as small red dots. The Ace of Hearts is next. From the Doctor's Cave, head east and into the town. The building you are looking for is green and will have a large hole in the backmost part of the wall. Once inside, the Ace can be found on a shelf or in the front room on the counter. The Ace of Hearts grants you 15% extra HP or, if another Ace is equipped, an extra 30%. The Ace of Clubs can be found in the Silver Peaks town. So, again, from the Doctor's Cave, head east and into town. This time you're looking for the boarding house, which is a blue building on the eastern side. Once inside, head upstairs, and in one of the rooms the Ace of Clubs can be found. It does like to switch up where it spawns, so be careful. The Ace of Clubs grants you a 25% increase to sneaking, and once another Ace is equipped, that increases to 50%. Salamander is another artifact that is involved in the main quest line, but I thought I ought to show it off as well. It can be grabbed from the Doctor after a fetch quest, or, if you're me, the Salamander was oddly glitched into the ground's inventory before I completed the quest, so I just picked it up and... Yippee! No fetch quest. The Salamander decreases demonic vapor damage by 80%, which makes it a great companion to the weapons that gain boons from standing in the stinky fumes. While you're hanging out with the Doctor, be sure to buy the powder horn off of him when you're there. This unique artifact grants 40% chance of firing a buffalo rifle without using any ammunition. So it comes especially in handy when dealing with the new multiple shot buffalo rifles available. The Lucky Paw is up next. From the mining rest camp near the south of the map, head north and up the slopes into the silver mine area. Once up the hill, head down and into the mining walled area. Inside this building on a crate you will find this artifact. The Lucky Paw grants you unlimited stamina until wounded, but after being wounded you lose 80% of your max stamina for 60 seconds. The Horseshoe is up next. From that same mining rest camp, head further south and into the iron mine area. It does have multiple spawn locations, but always spawns outside the mine and in the buildings area. This time I found it on a barrel. The horseshoe grants a 50% chance that an enemy attack will miss, a 20% increase to max stamina and max HP, and prices in stores are 30% better. But to remove it, you must die or drink a purple revive. Lastly, and certainly not least, we have the occult mass, which can also be found inside the iron mines. From the entrance of the Iron Mine camp, head south and into the Iron Mine. We will be following the path straight until we get to the backmost portion of the mine. Look for the two cultist enemies and the mass should be nearby. The occult mass usually spawns in this backmost part of the tunnels. The mass grants the user invisibility when they're at full HP, but you can still be heard. To remove this item, you must die or drink a purple revive. And there you have it! All the unique artifacts of the Barren Lands. I was only able to play through Chapter 3 a few times for research, so it's possible that I missed an artifact somewhere. Please let me know down in the comments if that's the case. I have other guides dropping with this video as well, so be sure to check them out if you're interested, as well as my other chapter guides. Thanks so much for watching. Happy hunting.